There's a good dog, aren't you? Eh? Big old paws. You good boy, eh? You good boy? There's yeah, a good dog. Come away, Bruno. Leave Dana. Oh, shut! Nice going! Smash the rabbit! That's a kill shot, honey. Definite kill shot. Wanna go fishing? Always finish on a good note. Currently, Dale and I at the Mar Pool Leisure Park. We've got these little units you can stay. And one of my patrons, Will, was staying here. And then I said, oh, he can come and stay with me. But he was staying in here in these units. It'd be quite nice to come and stay in here, wouldn't it, Dale? The delay frames. Mmm. Some more over there. Joey. Joey. I think fingers should be avoid putting in there though. They're quite uh, good with their beaks. Hey mate. Joey. I can't play. Okay, that's enough of that. I've got the crab net in there so you might better catch a few paddle crab and then use them to catch rig, but rig normally come out late at night or early in the morning. Man, that's really cool. Somebody's made that themselves, that's awesome. Pretty windy up here. That just ran away on me. Jeez, that came all the way from the cart. <laughs> Make up some rods and put some reels on. We're using squid bait. That's made out of a paintbrush dipped in sand, lead poured in, hole drilled in, squid. Dad has got her baits all cut up, she's all organised, she's ready to start baiting up and cast out. So wait, back through. Go right in the back, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah. Right in the back of it. There you, there you talk. That's a girl. Oh, I could go further than that. Just put another one in. That's a good cast, that's what I want it. Beauty. It's got a circle hook, so you just leave it and it will... What if it just pulls the... Um... Just, just grab it, and it's got a little bit of uh, tension on here. Just so what if it pulls the rod out into the ocean while you're not off? It won't, because I'm holding this. See that there? So there's a bit of tension. Just so that'll, that'll run with that. Oh! Tangled! See the line there, so you need to tighten this up. You need to tighten this up. I don't know how to do that, okay. which way? Stop, tighten it up, keep your line tight. There we go, like this here, next time. There you go. You still get your fish on. Keep your kitchen rod up. It's going well. I don't know if it's a huge one, but... No, it's not that big, but hey, you're still losing a bit of line. See that, so just... I just got to wind faster, yeah, right? Okay, okay, well your fish is coming in. Yeah, all right. Oh my gosh. What do you reckon, as a snapper, or...? You're losing line there, sweetheart. Oh, it's all good. Tighten it up, but we'll come on, tighten it up. Wait, get wait. In. It. You won't get in, tighten that up. Keep going. That's the one. Keep going. Hey, he's playing. Tighten your line up still, you're losing too much. There you go. That's it. That's it. What do you got? What do you got? Oh, you got a, uh, looks like a rig. Yeah, you got a rig. Or is it a spiny dogfish? Look at that there. Bring him right up. Bring him right up. It's so heavy. Put your rod down, sweetheart. What's that? Is that a rig or a That's a that's a rig. Can you eat it? Yeah, we can eat that. I'll get my own. That's a little rig. Yeah. Yeah, just in here. Yeah. Yep, yep, hold on, just go go this way so you can break in here with the braids up there, okay? Hold on, it's not on that. That's okay, stick it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Hey, that's your first rig. Yes. Not a huge one, they get bigger, but hey, you can eat that. Nice. We'll eat that tonight for dinner. That was good. Well, one fish is enough for our dinner. We didn't even put the crab net out yeah. because uh, we didn't need to. Oh, we've caught something in the crab net. Every adventure begins with a, a full tank of diesel. 
So today, meeting up with a mate, Wayne. Wayne is a childhood friend. I grew up in the Abel Tas National Park. My father was a ranger there, and Wayne lived over Wainu across the hill. So he was the closest kids to play with. Wayne's responsible for me sticking my first pig when I was eight years of age. Him and his brother, and his, well, his whole family, uh, and his relations, his cousins, we all used to go out hunting and fishing and have a pretty wicked time. So all these years later we're connecting up again. And who knows what's going to happen. Got the 243 in the back, fishing rod. Something will happen. I don't actually know exactly where we're going over there because uh, he knows the area like the back of his hand. He grew up there. Well, I did too, but he knows it probably better than me. He spent more time there. So uh, come for the ride. Should be a bit of a... Well, who knows what can happen. I was going to say it should be a bit of fun, but you just don't know. Anything could happen. Well here's where I'm meeting my mate Wayne and I'm seven minutes early and I love being early because I hate to keep people wait. You're probably the same. You always feel like, uh, I don't know, you're on their time. So that's one of the things I like to always do is call people if I think I'm going to be late and try to always get there a little bit early. And I teach this to the young fellas I take out too. I tell them uh, if we're going to be there, the hunt zone at nine o'clock if I get there at 9 o'clock and you're not there, then you're late. So, being on time is actually late. Well, uh, that there is the last. You won't get another one of those made. That's made by Ross Johnston. Uh, it's a bit of saw blade. You get a brass and... Miraculously, Wayne has kept this for bloody 20 years without losing it. He ain't making it anymore, brother, but I was actually in his forge two days ago making some throwing knives with Daly, and she threw one and it bounced off the wall and smacked straight into his shin and stuck him. Serious, I'm not joking. Oh, it worked then. Yeah, it worked good. Hey, that's, that's good to see, bud. And good to see you haven't got... Did you get the sheath made for it, or was that separate? Yeah, I did, but yeah. I didn't like it, and it was a left-handed one. Oh, yeah. So, it was like that. that. Oh, yeah. So, it was that. So, I just... Did you make this? No. Where'd that come from? Let's just get a bit um, QE. Oh, that's quality nice. equipment down yep, on the pool. Yep, quality equipment. That's where I get stuff from. Nice, mate. Well, it's good to see you still got it. I oh, hope we get some blood on it this weekend. These are the lures I'm using today. One of these. I reckon the trout might be quite good to use as Lures in here because most of the trout are feeding on each other, Wayne. I'm just going to go with a Tasmanian Devil for now. I like fishing where water runs out into the lake always carries like trace elements and minerals and bits of other insects and stuff. I spotted a trout just out here. And I've gone a wee bit to the right of it but I reckon it will see that still. So I'm expecting a strike here. Expecting a strike. Come on mate, take it can't see because I haven't got polar or glasses on but it'd be going past it about there oh we're on and we've got him yep got him not a biggie but he's on here we go he hit it that's just a wee fella oh man it's a tiny one oh bit of a bit of a harsh release it's a bit of a harsh release but he's gone I don't think it was the same trail I was looking at. It looked, uh, the one I saw was a bit bigger than that. Look at the gear 
around here. The fish here are all pretty small and it's good to take the numbers down because they're actually feeding on each other. Well, I can't be any worse than my daughter who stabbed uh, Ross the knife maker, it made your knife the other day. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice wee trout, eh? Did you get that in the Kentucky or off the beach with the rod? Right, Kentucky. Yep, yeah, the old salt. I've been trying to talk to, uh, into Wayne into uh, doing a trade my trout free snapper. Be one of a barber because he's a smart man. He knows that's going to taste better. That's actually perfect size for Pete, eh? Perfect size for me. <laughs> perfect size for you. It's okay, mate. Last time I came up here, I stayed in a tent. This time I'm staying in the Deer Stalkers Association hut because Wayne's a member and he's also one of the guys that made this hut happen. And I can tell you it's going to be a damn sight better than being in a bloody tent, that's for sure. That's if you're not snoring, that is. Eh? You'll, <laughs> you'll find out tonight <laughs> whether it's good or not. Yeah. Deer Stalkers hut. And it's the most bluntest knife you've ever seen. <laughs> oh, mate. My mate Vassy was up here, he'd be horrified. He'd fix it up in a heartbeat. Mind you, you're pretty good with sharpening knives. Love it. Steak. Steak here, sorry, it'll be good. It's good. It's really good. Yeah, but it'll be good. Pretty good, mate. Good to have a snack, one of you, buddy. Oh, mate. On you, Captain. Mmm, yum. Onions. We're taking out a bit of um, good stuff. So Wayne's eating all his snapper and he's left me a treat. Snapper head. Oh, that's good. Eating weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't taste like salmon, but it's not too far off. Just mm. far as trout goes, probably as good as it gets. Fluted. As we made our way up the Cobb Valley, I had this certain excitement in my belly that I could feel. Remembering from nearly 50 years ago when we were just kids and Wayne took me out on my very first pig hunt. All these years later now here I was walking behind the man. A man who I've got a lot of respect for and admiration. Seven years ago he had a terrible accident. A terrible accident in a digger that rolled down a bank. And he got a stroke from that and his knee down to his foot and his right foot, he can't feel nothing anymore and he also had a lot of other injury to go with it. And still after doctors telling him that he'd never really walked straight again, here he was going up the valley taking me to where we might find a deer. Well we moved further up the valley and found a nice spot parked up and as dark fell we waited for animals to come out. Nothing presented itself so we headed on back down the gully. And on the way down in the dark we picked up a deer and the, and the torchlight there but you can't shoot animals in torchlight in the National Park, it's illegal, nor can you spotlight them. So we just admired it and made our way back to the camp. In the morning, Wayne got up nice and early, caught a wee fat trout, and we had that for tucker that day. Oh, I can see Wayne on the point there fishing. No, it's all right. That's about the same one I ate yesterday, and there's a lot of tucker in one of those. Yep. How, how are you feeling after last night's big walk? Absolutely knackered, actually. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you did well to get up, mate. Hey, this trout's not as uh, nice. Not as red as the one I got, eh? Basically, what you get off one trout. There you go, Captain. That's yours. Awesome. Wrap your laughing gear on that. Thank you. Buddha Kings, brother. No complaints at all here. Wayne says that this isn't as good as the uh, the redder uh, flesh trout that I got yesterday. It smells good. I'm not giving it back. You're not giving it back? No. It's hot. Gonna try it a little bit. We need a wee bowl for our bones because I've left all the bones in. It's a, sort of a a very light pink, almost white flesh. I think you're being fussy. <laughs> I think it's good chomping, mate. Good luck with your own fishing and good luck with your own hunting because it can't go any worse than ours has gone. That's my eighth hunt now without getting blood on my knife. 
the winds come up. Be good, can't be good, be careful, and I'll see you next video. Oh, I love it here, eh? <laughs> Pretty hard. Pretty hard, hard not to hard, love it. Hard life, dude. Hard life, mate.